Hello everyone, and welcome to the week at theinstep.com. Adam versus James. James here. This week I'm playing green and black mid-range or rock or whatever you want to call it. Um, I did get this list from somewhere, but I honestly don't remember. It's been a while, so I apologize. But it's look. If this was like a real archetype, I feel like this would be the stock list. It just looks pretty stock. Um, if not, maybe a little heavy on the removal, but. Let's just run through it. I do have some proxies for older cards, and I apologize for that. Um, we have a full complement of Groth Messengers. I mean, uh, this is like a swamp deck, pretty much, and he's just a really resilient threat, a strong threat. He does a lot of stuff, so there's like no reason not to play Dross Messengers. The fact that he's a zombie or like the main zombie in zombie decks is completely irrelevant. And because we play Messengers, doesn't mean we have to play the other zombies. So like we don't. You know, he's just a, he's a, he's a He's a rock creature, you know, for people who love this color combination or this archetype or this kind of strategy, he definitely feels very rocky, and so does, so does Desecration Demon. But then going from there, we have our, we have a playset of Thrag Tusks. Uh, I mean, great stabilizer, I mean, great beater, great everything. He's, he's a good guy. Very green. Two spears. Uh, then we have our four Desecration Demons. This is almost like the picture, what am I thinking of, uh, like the milk carton guy, you know, like he's the, he's the, the guy of the deck, you know, if this deck had a face, it would be Desecration Demon. Uh, he's the good old 6-6, six, six, four-mana guy with, like, a sometimes useful ability, sometimes hindrance, uh, with Flyer. Like, he's just a giant, giant beat stick. Like, to me, he is the rock strategy, just in him. Like, a really efficient, low-cost guy that can do tons of damage and happens to be mono-black. Going from there, we have two Disciple of Bullets, which has an enormous amount of synergy with all of our, all of our threats. Um... I, I mean, you don't really want to sacrifice Desecration Demon, but chances are he might be pretty big. So you, it's like a four mana Sphinx Revelation for seven, you know, or something crazy. Um, or eating your own Thrag Tusks to gain a bunch of. There's so much advantage to have Disciple of Bullets. I'm honestly surprised he didn't see more play. Um, now that his time in the wind is kind of dying down, I don't think he's going to see more play at this point. But um, he has a lot of synergies in a deck like this, and two of them might actually be a little on the low side. Um, going from there, we have two Mindic Cremates. Uh, this kind of borrows from, like, uh, Jun's strategy of two Mindic Ground Seals. Gives you a little bit of, like, Mindic Graveyard Hate and a card draw spell. And because we're mostly a predominant deck and a little of, much lower on the green side, this is a better option than something like Ground Seal. Uh, it's just a little utility in the main deck. Nothing crazy. It doesn't have any awesome synergy in the deck or anything. It's just there. We have our Mono Black card draw spells, Sign and Bloods. Uh, pretty standard. Sometimes you can burn somebody out if you have like a bunch of these and uh, they're low. It's possible. Here's where it starts to get a little little heavy. So we've got four main deck mutilates. Uh, this works in this deck because we have a gigantic brick of swamps, but uh, I think it's totally fine. Uh, it's a board sweeper in a mid-range deck, so it's like a little weird. So this deck kind of plays like a control deck sometimes, but we should be able to make good use of it. Especially in our matchup today, uh, it's going to hit a lot of really, really strong targets. So we have two Mandic Abrupt Decays, uh, also pretty decent in the format right now. A lot of three, three Convey Mana Cast or less, and pretty much all the strategies. You'll, you'll have like silly things like Argor Boluses you want to hit maybe once in a while, or Snapcast Mages, and then you have Domery's, uh, Boris Reckoners, Locks on Smiters, and other strategies. All the humans in Naya Blitz, like the entire deck. Uh, there's lots of like really, really strong things to hit with Abrupt Decay, so we have two in the main. Uh, then we have two Victim of Knights, three Tragic Clips, and two Putrefies as hard removal. I mean, the, the Tragic Clips aren't always hard removal, but you can usually set it up with all this removal to be hard removal. With, like you, We have Victim of Knight, which is awesome because we have a black, so we can actually cast it, and it kills a very large amount of stuff. Putrefy, also the other like best kill spell in the format, and we have three Devour Fleshes. Like, uh, like Adam said to me, uh, this deck probably has like a really good fan hexproof matchup because it has main deck to fleshes, and that's very very true. So if you're going into like a very heavy uh, ban hexproof metagame, something like this might be to consider. Something like really heavy black. Uh, we have the four four of each of the green black dual lands plus two gold guard guild gates just for a little more green sources, and then fourteen swamps. That's all it is. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, we have to stay really swamp heavy for something like mutilate. So that's why we play so many things, not instead of like Oracle Guard Guild Gates. Not that I even think we would to begin with. But that's the main deck, pretty straightforward. Pretty much just like a play creatures, kill your dude, and try and beat your face in for the next 10 turns. Let's take a look at the sideboard. So here we're at the sideboard. Uh, because we're limited to two colors, it's pretty straightforward. We have two Underworld Connections for control matchups, 
Two ground seals for value against reanimation or graveyard based strategies. Two Lugari charms also for control matchups or mainly Supreme, Verd Supreme Verdict based control matchups. Also good against something like Lingering Souls. Two more Putrefies for creature matchups. Three Appetite for Brains uh, is fine against control matchups, but it's a little more for Jund and uh, mid range decks. And it's not bad against Remando too because getting Angels turning out of their hand is awesome. And then we have four duresses. It's a lot of disruption spells, but we have four duresses for control matchups. And I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Like I said, two colors, so we limited our options. And the deck pretty much has tons of removal, so let's really play two more removal on the sideboard. And there's no other creatures that we want to be playing, so the only other option is any kind of card advantage we can get, which is something like Underworld Connections and Hand Disruption. So Black's really known for and it's really good at. So there we have it. Thanks.